Hey there, y'all. We went on vacation this week, and I thought I would share with you a little bit. We went with our best friends, and we went to a John Schneider concert. So here's some of our food, some of the concert, some of the beach. It was a great time. We had some smoked tuna dip and some fresh seafood. It was so good. Hey, y'all. It's Tuesday, and we are having Sloppy Joe. Both of my... I was making... Uh, oh, what do you call it? Beef stroganoff. But both my kids came off the school bus saying, I want some manwich. Well, this ain't manwich. This is what we call poor folks manwich from the Aldi, but uh, it's gonna taste just as good. So, we got some onion. I've got two pounds of burger here. We're only gonna eat one pound, but I'm gonna cook twice. Oh, wait, I'm gonna cook once and I'm gonna eat twice. So we're gonna reserve the second pound for something else later in the week. I've got a little oil on the bottom of the pan here going. And over here, Gunner, has got I've got some more meat falling in the bowl right there these are clean dishes by the way so over here in the air fryer Gunner has put himself some waffle fries in here uh where's the bag at buddy right there okay he's he's gonna have him put some more more than that in there and then we'll this is the first time we've ever cooked these so we got these from Aldi also I think are they aren't they called waffle fries yes, yes. so we're gonna see how they turn out in this gigantic air fryer. I told Justin I wanted an air fryer one year. This is what came. It's like a gigantic green egg. Anyway, here we go. All right, our burger's going. We're gonna put some seasoning on here. Oh, making a mess. The old trusty nature seasons. And why not, let's add some garlic powder or onion powder. I was looking at that and reading this. I'm gonna slap some onion in here. So I'm just gonna cook this up like, I guess you could call it generic burger. And then when it gets done, I will divide it out, reserve off the other half, and put this sloppy joe sauce on. And we'll be back when that's ready. Well, uh, Gunner's waffle fries went off and he didn't shake them halfway through. <laughs> he did? Oh, I didn't see him shake them halfway through. Anyway, they went off and I shook them. So I was gonna go um, tell him, your waffle fries are burning. But anyway, first I wanna show y'all, look at this fashion statement I'm making. My hair's up through this little ponytail. We all know, once you put these hats on, once you take them off, it's scary. But I got a red hat. I don't know what color this shirt is, but I got a different printed skirt. And check out my socks. Can you see my socks? Where are they? Yeah. They match my hat. Fashion statement, you know. Look, no beer. Hey, Gunner. Where are you? Look. Your waffle fries got done and you didn't shake them. I did. I turned them back on now. I shook them. You gotta shake them again. You gotta keep shaking, man. <laughs> you win. Go. I have put half of our burger over here. We're just gonna dump this baby in. Turn my burner down, I'm gonna turn it back up just a little bit. Now, what are the directions up in this thing? Let's see. Stir in the canned sauce, heat for five minutes, serve on a bun. All right, it doesn't say add water, but I'm gonna rinse, get some of that out of the pan. Out of the pan. I can't believe they both came off the bus saying, I want some manwich. Now we ain't never had no manwich in this house. It's always been an Aldi time, but whatever. All right, I'm gonna let this simmer, thicken up, get good and yummy. We got the fries going over here. Gonna have shook them and changed them a couple times. Let's check those out. Pretty good. They look really yellow and golden on my camera. Cool. All right, well, anyway, are they done? Yeah, they're done. Okay, ready for the next batch? Let's put these in a bowl. Salt and the fries. Add a little 
proper tension to our life up in here. Dinner for Tuesday night, Sloppy Joe. Hey there, y'all. This is not dinner. Well, we call it dinner. It's, it's what most people call lunch. But I thought I would jump on here and show y'all. Uh, school was canceled today because of the ice. So we got this Red Baron pizza for free using Ibotta. So I'm gonna cook this for lunch. And then I'm gonna try this cauliflower crust pizza from Aldi, it's gluten free. I'm really excited. I got the veggie kind. Can't really see it yet, but hopefully it's gonna be yummy. So have y'all ever tried this? Let me know. Um, this was like $6, which is normally, that's like way more than I'd ever pay. But because we got this free, I thought if I spent $6 on this, one, I could try the gluten free pizza and know if it was good. And two, it would still make the entire meal affordable. But Justin also wants some of these pizza squares because we have a 15 year old and a nine year old and then the two of us. So we don't think this is gonna feed us all. So, and he really likes these. So we'll probably, I don't know, he might put those in the microwave or they might even be better in the air fryer. So we will see how it turns out. Okay, the cauliflower pizza is fabulous. I do not regret it and I will totally get it again. Hey y'all, good evening on this icy day, not to be confused with a snowy day. We had pizza earlier for lunch that y'all seen and I have cooked a pot of beans all day today. I think I put about two pounds of, or two pounds, two cups of beans in here and then I just, I don't really measure the water, I just filled the pan up. But these are looking good. I put just some nature seasons and some garlic powder and onion powder in here and here I chopped up some onion put in here just big chunks for some flavor I would put some bacon or ham or something like that in here but it's cold outside and I didn't want to go out to the freezer so these would be just as good so now we're gonna make us some jalapeno cornbread or cornbread muffins and fry us a pan of potatoes okay I am simply gonna make some of this corn muffin mix I don't usually eat this. Uh, it does have wheat flour in it, but it's gonna be yummy, so I'm eating it anyway. Just a little bit. So, it just calls for, I ain't got my glasses on. Uh, good Lord. It's the box of this, one egg and a third a cup of milk at 400. So I reckon we have to turn this oven on, don't you? That might be a good idea. Turn the oven on. Make sure I got my skillets out. I do, because they're right here on the stove. But hey, you never know what a kid might put in there, so always check your oven. All right, so I'm gonna get my glasses. All right. The blind lady's got her glasses on now. What are we gonna do? Grease the pan or use paper baking cups. I'm gonna use these, easy cleanup. So then we're just gonna mix it all together. Y'all probably know how to do this, it's easy. This box is super cheap, it makes six muffins. I think six, it's been a while since I made any. Six of these little muffins here that I make. If you wanna make some big jolly muffins, probably not six. But it's enough for us. This is like, 48 cents. Actually, this one was free. It was just that I got it on my bottle. So, anyhow, I'll make sure I'm doing this right. Stir ingredients together. Da -da 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 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. There we go. Now, I have chopped up some jalapenos. Can y'all see those? Let me see. Mm, yeah, I think you can see them. I got, I was at Aldi when I bought the jalapenos. If y'all seen my grocery haul, they didn't have diced. They just have these whole ones and I wasn't driving across town to the Wallsworth to get some. So just dice them up yourself. Use what's available, right? All right. What is, what is not available is my measuring cup. I it over here by the beans. So what did it say? Third cup of milk and an egg. Oh, uh, let's do a little more for good measure. All right, we got a third cup of milk. And we've got an egg. Where's 
there in your scrap bowl. Now, we're just gonna toss these jalapenos right in here. Make this good old pan of cornbread muffins. Beat the egg up a little bit. Get it all mixed in together. What's up? Do I have the record button on? Well, it's a good thing, because I done did some stuff. So that the box says it'll be clumpy. Let me tell you exactly what it says. It says, what does it say? Batter will be slightly lumpy. Oh, wait. For maximum cram on muffins, let batter rest for three to four minutes. Stir lightly before filling cups. Maximum cram, like when it puffs out the pan, out the muffin pan. I don't need no cram. I just need the needs to be cooked so I can put it in my beans. Good enough for me. We'll let it rest for just a minute while I put the eggs and the milk back in the refrigerator. pillar. Ah. I'm going to pillar some taters. So I got a bag just of red potatoes. Oh my gosh, there's soap on that one. I just got a bag of red potatoes at the store because it's a five pound bag. I didn't feel like we would use a 10 pound bag. We're not really eating a whole lot of potatoes right now, but it's freezing outside and I thought, oh, with some ice and cold weather coming, I want a pan of beans and fried taters. So, Red potatoes are so much easier to peel, and I normally don't peel them, except Emmy likes to eat the potatoes peeled, and she will not eat the beans. She's not a big bean person. So, I know she'll eat these potatoes. So, I'm just gonna peel us some mess of taters here, and then yesterday when I was thawing some deer meat, to fry up for what was going to be stroganoff and then the kids wanted sloppy joes. I also thawed up, thawed up. Y'all used, I used to say unthawed. Does anybody else call it unthaw? I'm going to unthaw. Actually, I thawed some deer meat that we can just fry in the pan. And I'm going to fry that up for Sissy. She'll eat that with these potatoes since she won't eat the beans. I don't want her to eat anything. I'm not just going to make her some random noodles. I want her to eat a good dinner and eat dinner with us, not just like a separate meal. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, our potatoes have... Oh, potatoes, my goodness. Our cornbread. Hmm, what should I do with this with? A spoon? Our cornbread has rested. The oven is warm. The potatoes are peeled and rinsed. They're about ready to go in, so I'm getting ready to I'm gonna warm up this skillet here for the potatoes. Get that going good and warm. Just gonna scoop this in here until I until my little heart is happy.
Okay, we're getting warm over here. I'm gonna put my onions in it because I want my onions to get good and sauteed. Go ahead and put some of this meat over here in the pan. Tater on the run. done. I'd like it to be a little more golden brown than what it is. So I'm, I'm not going to turn the minutes like back up. I'm just going to leave them in there for a little bit. I have overflowed my cater pan. So that's all right. I need to get my big old cast iron skillet. I think I've got a bigger one out there in the garage or at least a pot. I know I've got a Dutch oven. Oh, come on, Tater. Okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of, woo! You hear that popping? A little bit more oil in this pan. I'm gonna turn the burner down, because it's good and hot. That's all we need. That's for it to be what it is right there. Hey, quit popping at me. Our last little batch here. And this will make a big mess all over the stove. Yay! I guess if it's a big mess, it means it tastes good.
Okay, there you have it. That's my bowl and, let me see my shot on my fingers. <laughs> That's my bowl and Emmy's plate. The boys will probably have a couple pieces of meat too. But this is what you call a nice diabetic coma for dinner on Wednesday night, on a nice cold, icy Wednesday night. Good morning. What Good day morning. is it? Thursday? It's Thursday, February 24th. Yep. So no school again because of the ice and we're making some breakfast here. Yay. So we take y'all along. It's gonna be in our what's for dinner video, but it's just gonna be what's for dinner and more, I guess, maybe, because we're gonna do some, make some goodies today. So I thought I'd show y'all. I wanted to give you a super great tip. Oh, let's not cut Emmy's face off, sorry, baby. I wanted to give you a super great tip on saving some money, okay? Like when your kids are home, not having school, a really good thing to do to save money. Now, I'm really serious. This is a perfect way to save money. Do you know what it is, Emmy? Nope. Let the kids sleep till noon and then you don't have to spend money on an extra meal like breakfast. <laughs> so, it's like, I don't know, what time is it? It's 10 till 11, so I'm getting started on brunch. We ain't making breakfast, we're gonna have lunch. And then supper. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm just kidding y'all. But uh, they sleep all morning, so we don't have to have a third meal. We just have brunch, lunch, and uh, like supper. So anyway, look here, let me show you. Watch out, baby. I'm gonna make some hash brown casserole, but my hash browns were frozen, so I put them in that pan in there to try and thaw them. Uh, and hopefully it won't take too long. The oven is up to the temperature I need it to be, so. I'll show you guys how to make that breakfast casserole. All I'm doing with the sausage here is I'm gonna fry it up and make a little pack of gravy. I'm just gonna mm, use yummy. this. Got this from the Walmart. It's gonna be yummy. Gravy for the for Justin and the kids. Now, they didn't have no biscuits at the Aldi. They didn't have no biscuits at the Walmart. So the next best thing is we're gonna serve sausage gravy over a slice of bread. It will taste just as good. One minute. What are y'all doing? I guess I can't say what are y'all doing because you, you can't really answer me now. Hmm. I'm used to doing that on my Snapchat. Hmm. Well, I guess you could tell me what you're doing on this icy day anyway, even though it won't be icy whenever you guys probably watch this. Comment down below. Comment down below. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, our sausage is done, and what I've done is, that's a little bit hot. What I've done is, I've left a little bit of that um, grease from the sausage in this pan here. That's why I'm gonna cook the eggs in here in a little bit. But right now, I'm gonna get our uh, hash brown casserole going. So, I am gonna put the sausage in with the gravy in this pan over here, so I don't have to leave the gravy. So, I wanted a little sausage with my eggs. I've just reserved a little bit off to the side for me, so I can keep that gluten free, and I'm just gonna make the gravy in that pot. We're gonna get this hash brown casserole going. And after that's kind of cooking for a little bit, we will start the eggs because, you know, you want it kind of all done around around the same time. So let's get started on this casserole. Okay, I'm not following an exact recipe, but I'm kind of, you know, I've read some and then I'm just piecing it together. So I had, I went out to the uh, freezer to get some apple butter out of the freezer for, to make a dessert I'm gonna make today. And I seen this bag of hash browns. It's like, it was like half a bag of hash browns. So I thought, ooh, I'm gonna make some hash brown casserole. So I got some of those just frozen hash browns. I have a can of creamy chicken, some sour cream, I have an onion, and it calls for cheese. Well, most of them call for cheese. So um, I have some cheese I could shred, but I also had this. So I'm just gonna use some of this cheese dip I got from the Aldi. And then, of course, we'll put in some seasoning. We'll put in some nature seasoning, probably some onion powder. That'll probably be good. So let's mix this together.
I'm sure that this is probably not very healthy. Great for nachos, vegetables, pretzels, and potatoes. I don't have my glasses on, can't see nothing. Well, anyway, it says made with real cheese. But it tastes good. Well, that's probably about half the jar. Eh, probably about half the jar. Now, let's cut up this onion. Uh, I got too much stuff. Too much stuff. Found a knife. I have not emptied the dishwasher, so everything's just right here. And my girlfriend. I poured, I followed the directions just like on the package. I poured one and a half cups of water in with my sausage and I have brought that to a bowl. And then it said to mix another half cup of cool water with this gravy. So that's what I'm doing and then I'm just gonna pour it in. Get all that yummy goodness, all that pepper falls to the bottom. really good already it is gonna be clumpy only because it's got the sausage in there of course so, you have to stir it or it'll kind of splatter now you can see some of the grease some of the grease from the sausages in there but be all right it makes it good and flavorful now we like a lot of pepper on ours so I'm just gonna put Some more pepper. I say we, they. I don't need it. I would eat it. I wish I could eat it. I could, but it wouldn't be a very good idea. 
See that? See how it's nice and thick already? And we're good. We have a few minutes left for the uh, French brown casserole, but that's okay. The boys are out anyway, so when they come back in, we will eat. already still hot so let's make our plates okay here's Emmy and I's place I do think maybe with the hash brown casserole I didn't use the whole bag there was only half a bag in there uh, it might be a little too liquidy maybe it maybe had something to do with that kind of cheese that I used but regardless Emmy regardless it is it smells good it's gonna be yummy it's not like pouring runny you know, but I mean, it is probably more liquidy than what most people want. So, but anyway, this is brunch and we're going to make some yummy goodness here in a little bit. Just stuff to snack on while there's no school. But right now we're gonna dig into this. Yummy. Okay, let's make some goodies here. I've still got breakfast on the stove because the boys haven't come in yet, so we're just going, going to ignore that over there. So we're going to make some goodies to snack on during this icy weather with no uh, school or nothing. Um, I've got half of this butter pecan cake right here because I already used some of it to make what I'm making right now. Um, I've got some apple butter that's been in the freezer. I thawed it. I probably will only use half. I'm not sure. I might use the whole thing. I might just wing it. Who knows? I usually wing things. And then the recipe for the whole box calls for an entire stick of butter. So this is not an entire stick. This is probably what, three quarters maybe? I don't know. But I'm probably just gonna use part of this for that. And I had a little bit of this cream cheese frosting left in the fridge. And a little bit of this vanilla frosting left in the fridge. So we're gonna use that too, all together. And then we're also gonna make a pan of brownies. So here we go. Okay, when you're making a, like a big, what do they call that, 11 by 13, when you're making a big cake pan full, it calls for, this recipe calls for the whole box. It's, I think this is called a dump cake, I'm not really sure. Ah, so I'm just using this small pan, but it also calls for like one of those cans of uh, pie filling. You can use cherry, apple, whatever you want. Um, I'm just using the apple butter, butter that I made. Whenever you have apples that are going south and they need to be used up, make you a pan of apple butter in the Instant Pot or Crock Pot or on the stove, however you want to do it. I think I made this in, on the stove, but it was a while back. So, um, this would not be enough if you had one of the big regular size cake pans. So I just went ahead and used the whole thing. So we're gonna make use of that apple butter. You could use pie filling, but I'm gonna use what I've got in my freezer. I don't wanna go to the store and buy different stuff. Plus, like I said, it's icy outside. I'm not gonna go to the store and buy different things. 
I'm just gonna use what I got for some goodies. All we do we leave this butter on here we're just gonna pop it into the oven like this the butter's gonna melt and cook that cake up real good when it comes out we will top it we'll let it cool a little bit and then we'll top it with this frosting and then I have uh, I think I have some pecans over there in the pantry on, on the baking shelf so that's all we do for that and then we'll start on the brownies has cooled and this is two different kinds of icing but eh, we're gonna put it on here the boys are over here trying to sneak brownies behind me or beside me I reckon Did 
it. I'm gonna have a piece. I shouldn't, but I'm gonna. All right, y'all, I'm gonna get some supper going here. We are having leftovers. So I'm gonna make the girls, Amy's got a friend staying over, so we're gonna make them some Sloppy Joe sandwiches. And this is leftover from the beans I made. I decided, I saw Julie Pacheco, yeah, Julie Pacheco, make, uh, it was like beans with white rice with rotel. So I thought, ooh, next time I make some beans, I'm gonna make some of that because it looked really good. So I've got this uh, Aldi brand rotel. I'm gonna use the, the rest of my beans. This is some rice, obviously, left over from, it's just white rice, left over from when we had Chinese on the way home from vacation. I didn't feel like cooking, so we went through drive through and got some Chinese. This is a pound of burger that I reserved earlier in the week whenever I fried two pounds. So I'm also gonna add that into here. Now she didn't do that, but I thought, ooh, that's gonna be really good. So I'm gonna add that in there. And then we have our leftover potatoes from this morning. I got out some pickles, some cottage cheese, some okra. Everybody can add on and kind of snack on. And remember, leftovers are free. So we've accounted for these, the cost of this, uh, all of this, and our other meals. This is deer burgers, so it didn't cost us anything. So this is a very affordable meal for the night. The only thing that we have to add the cost to is this can of Rotel and in my Instant Pot, I am going to cook one more cup of rice because I don't feel like this is gonna be enough rice for what I really want it to be. I'm trying to decide, now I'm gonna taste these whenever they get done. I'm trying to decide if I might add some taco seasoning to the meat. I don't know yet, we'll see. I feel like I forgot what I was doing. I forgot that I was supposed to be recording this. <laughs> so I poured my uh, beans in here and I'll tell you, I'm a little worried about um, putting these on pressure to cook the rice and then being like too mushy, but you know what? I think I will forever be on experiment mode with my Instant Pot. So I'm just gonna go with it. Okay, I'm not gonna drain the juice off this because I want all that yummy goodness in there. burger in here. Now I just pulled this straight out of the fridge. I just put, put it in this bowl in the fridge for a couple days with aluminum foil over it so that it was good and airtight. Oh, I mean it's fine. It's almost like I'm making chili. <laughs> oh it smells good. Okay now I, hmm, I can't decide if I want to put more liquid in there for my rice. There's quite a bit of liquid, but once you put the burger in there, it may not be enough. All right, so I'm going to use up this rice right here. Well, it's brown rice, but, ah, whatever. White rice with soy sauce or something, I don't know. Might taste a little funky. Ah. or nobody will know the difference, right? You call it making slop. Still smells good. All right, so let's go ahead. We're gonna put the one cup of rice. I'm gonna go ahead and add a cup of water because I don't feel like there's enough liquid in there. I just don't feel like there's gonna be enough. And this is gonna take a while to come to pressure because there is so much liquid in the pot. Okay, so I'm just gonna do like four minutes. Get the rice good and cooked and hopefully make the beans not be mushy, right? Because everything's cooked except the rice. I really don't want the beans to be mush. I just want them to be heated up because they've been in the fridge. with this thing for a minute. We're on ceiling right here. We're gonna do manual for four minutes and we'll see if the whole, if it's really hot, if it's all hot by the time that's done. All right. It's been 
done for about 10 minutes or so. I was looking at a recipe book. I got, I got distracted. So the rice thickened it up pretty good. This smells so good. I'm ready to eat. I think I'm gonna, um, I got, I've got two of those jalapeno corn muffins from last night. Was it last night? Yeah. Uh, but I think I will eat with this. Yum, yum. All right, leftovers is what's for dinner tonight. Update, my rice is still crunchy. And I bite my tongue, Ugh. So, we're going back on, back on. We're gonna do six minutes. Five minutes, six minutes, I don't know what we're gonna do. Let's do another four minutes. Put it on ceiling. And then, hopefully, I'm starving! So hopefully it'll be done. Okay, we're trying again. And this time, I don't care if the rice isn't done, I'm starving. Oh yeah, it's done now. I can feel it when I stir it now. It does feel, the texture feels different. Mmm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna crumble one of these up into my bowl and enjoy. On this night, we had Thai for supper. Justin and I went out on a date and I had some fresh rolls with some soup and Thai fried rice. Justin had something, I think he calls it the crying tiger. Anyway, his is really good. And then I topped mine with this super nice hot sauce. It was so good. 